So today's a little strange, a little, what the hell is my camera looking at? Today's a little strange, a little different. Um, I'm going to uh, go over some things that I wanted to go over so that we can work on making some some videos for the YouTubes and the, the Rumbles, which hopefully people are going to from time to time and clicking subscribe and like and the rumble button and the subscribe button over there as well because it really helps having the likes and the subscribes it, it really helps out a lot it's not like it pays me money when you do this it just helps me figure out what types of things and content people are interested in so that I'm able to better make more content for people to consume. So, please like and subscribe down below. Hit the rumble button or the, the like button, whatever it is on the platform you're on. It's uh, it's real helpful, including on Twitch. If you're on Twitch and you hit the follow button and you come by once in a while when you see that we're on, for any creator, any streamer, anybody out there, if you just swing by when they're live, you go to their channels, you click follow, it it really helps them figure out what works, what doesn't. If you're in a live and you're chatting, it helps them out with uh, figuring out how to manage creating content and interacting with you at the same time, which is what a lot of people want to have. So please make sure you do that. That being said, we're going to watch these videos. Well, we're going to watch a video about how uh, the Illuminati ended this uh, woman's career in seven seconds, apparently. What is that? Like, look, there are strange videos you can find if you really want to, right? Like, shot at Nazi with Tila Tequila. What the hell is this? Marilyn Manson is a wolf in wolf's clothing. What? Swipe right for ten million dollars on Tinder. Like I'm sure that actually does happen. Is a lot of women do that to make money. I'm sure. Like that's okay. That's a huge amount of loss. Daily? Jesus. A documentary style creator that has recently had a reputation destroyed by going down dark, cruel, and hypocritical path revealing many lies and allegations that would ultimately lead a massive viewer base to turn on him. Just gonna say if you're creating content and you go through this whole thing that's like hypocritical to your point and your entire channel is built around you being genuine it's not going to work out for you. But to fully understand why Illuminati is facing such a ruthless backlash, I first need to take you back to where it all began. When I started her main YouTube, Illuminati, back in 2015, the channel was a show of what it is today. The Blair primarily posted Reddit style of content before making the shift to the high quality, well scripted video essays that she's known for today. Over the years, Blair would post content covering unethical businesses, whether that so that makes sense to me. If you're going to make uh, content where you're talking about unethical businesses and you're going to script it out and do it that way, that makes a lot of sense to script out videos about that because you don't want to misspeak when you're talking about corrupt business. Um, there's a lot of legal ramifications to that, so that makes a lot of sense to have scripted out. A mysterious storm is brewing at Bush Gardens. Oh, really? I'm not going. I don't give a shit about these things. Multi-level marketing schemes, also known as pyramid schemes, okay? And some people think that these are illegal. They're really not. They're just shady businesses. They're not illegal businesses. They're just scams, and they get people. So, uh, oops, be careful is my point to that. I did not mean to press whatever button I just pressed. I was trying to get something off my keyboard. 
Where were we here? But to fully understand why we're primarily posted by we'll start here again. Performance from the ship with a higher quality than scripted video essays that she's known for today. Over the years, Blair will post content covering unethical business deals, whether that be evil nonprofit organizations, multi level marketing schemes, or even cults hidden in plain sight. Although Blair wouldn't see immediate growth, her channel would steadily rise in popularity, reaching 1 million subscribers by the 17th of August 2021. Blair pioneered the anti animal genre on YouTube, and the very active community formed around her content. That makes sense. A lot of people end up not fans of multi-level marketing schemes or pyramid schemes because they get sucked into them or their friends or loved ones get sucked into them and then they realize how destructive these can be because these people will dedicate themselves to this effort of running this business that is designed for them to never make money but to funnel money to the people above them within that scheme. So it makes a lot of sense for that to work out very well over time for, th for that type of uh, viewership. Both well respected and admired by her fans and fellow creators. But even with the positive public image, it would only be a matter of time before the cracks in her facade would begin to reveal themselves, as Blair would find herself in a number of controversies with smaller creators. But it wouldn't be until she decided to pick on someone of her own size that things would finally go south. On the 20th of... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So she did really good when she'd pick on people that were beneath her. When she punched down, she did well. But when she had to punch out, you know... Apparently, she got strangled. April 2023, Blair would make a Twitter thread calling out the legal eagle editing team for plagiarism, with the tweet reading, Not legal eagle editors approaching my editors to take my video style. And when they didn't give up the info, they literally copied it. Just changed the color from purple to blue. Huh. Interesting. Blair backed up her accusations with a few screenshots of one of legal eagle's editors asking for help with an editing problem. With a tweet reading, so I went through my emails and found this, just out by saying, yeah, I'm going to do this, but if you could make it easier for me, I'd appreciate it. With the email reading, hey Blair, I work as an editor for Legal Eagle, and I was wondering if there were some after effects plugins that you guys used for things like the intro for the first NFL video, where the line of color appears to stick out in 3D. We could recreate it, but we forget there was probably a faster method you guys were using. Here's the video I'm talking about, just so you know what I mean. Thanks. Danny. She even went on to show us messages on our Discord server, with the tweet reading, Also went to my Discord server to try and get more of the copper style, followed up by a screenshot of some of his messages in the Discord server. At the end of her thread, she provided a few examples of Legal Eagle allegedly copying her editing style, with a final tweet reading, And to be honest, I wouldn't have believed any of this was trying to replicate my videos if not for the email and Discord stuff that was done preemptive to their video coming out. Let's talk about can I copy your homework. Yeah, but just make it a little different. Shaking my head. From Blair's perspective. Now, that is some shady shit to see going on. The thing is, if they're editing their own videos and they're doing it in your style, they're still editing their own videos. If they had access to your editors and paid them to do work for them as well in the same style they're still doing their own videos so the thing is while this might be shady it's also why are you trying to go after them for just making videos if they're not directly taking your content or like even what I'm doing right where it's this here's somebody else's content but I'm adding to it right like I'm adding my own commentary my own insight my own thoughts and that makes it my own video the thing is If they're not directly taking your shit, they're not directly taking your shit, so why start a problem? Like, you don't have to help them, but why start a problem? This year, do something new. Do something for you. Successfully pulled out a fellow creator that was trying to steal her style. But to everyone who viewed... Like I said, who who cares? It's It's a style. Congratulations. This would be like... Basically, any modern comedian today being ridiculed for following in the footsteps of people like Pryor, Kennison, right? Like, you have people who really just 
broke the ground in comedy and started stand up on the path that it's on now at a time where they were getting arrested for it at a time where it was considered uncouth or you couldn't have bad words in your comedy because you wouldn't get spots or you wouldn't get that show you wouldn't get that sitcom etc etc that's what this is like to complain about but here's the thing if you're doing something and it is successful other people will copy you because you're doing it well that's why uh to take it to a different realm right to talk about it in a political sense it's why i dislike the way that a lot of what america does internationally is how we do things internationally if we just lead by example all of a sudden there's less to bitch about right if we're not trying to force freedom on people we just say hey you know what um you requested help here's some aid you've asked for assistance here's what we can offer you meanwhile we're going to focus on taking care of our own shit here primarily but we're not going to ignore the world we're going to help out where we're asked for help and we're going to focus the majority of our efforts on just making sure that we set the best example possible if we were to do that things would work out much better the fact is places like china that don't do that right they don't do it but they have such a stranglehold on their local media that it appears as if that's what they do have better receptive international means at the moment and it's because it through optics appears that they're leading in this way so like my point is they are who's being copied because it appears that they are leading by example and that's she's complaining that people are copying her example which is absurd the thread Blair was clearly in the wrong and acting completely childish we're trying to claim the most basic Evelyn style look at the channel near TV and put on 50 true crime docs and you'll find the same style in four or five of them which just seems weird and petty yeah exactly that's exactly what I've been saying basically it seems to make the most frequent absurd and unjustified accusations of plagiarism not enough that they steal ideas have to go out of the way to stand to others work for having the most banal similarities the tables had turned on Blair as now she was the one yep. being accused of plagiarism Professor Hugh Fudenberg I'm not surprised a man named oh oh hold on hold on um um So tables had turned on Blair as now she was the one being accused of plagiarism. And here's how I feel about it. Yeah, it's this one, isn't it? These fucks. How dare they? Ah, shenanigans. I just want the specific video. Give me what I want. I'm pretty sure he actually said it here. Yeah, there we go. So... See, bam. There it is. I found it. 
that's how I feel about this coming full circle on her. Professor Fudenberg has long been controversial. A man named Hugh Fudenberg, a former immunologist who has been long controversial. In 1989, he was caught up in a bizarre lawsuit involving the Food and Drug Administration, which told him he had to stop injecting his autistic child patients with blood products. In 1989, he was caught up in a strange. bizarre lawsuit with the Food and Drug Administration, which told him he had to stop injecting mm. his autistic patients with blood products. Eventually, did that just say what I think it said? Yeah, he, not just his autistic patients; they were children. His autistic child patients with blood products. I'm happy they stopped that. That's crazy as fuck. Legal Eagle responded to clear the air. Now, context that Blair completely let down. With a tweet reading, "Hey Illuminati, I think this is a big misunderstanding. Perhaps great minds think alike. No one on my team is trying to copy you. Without an exhaustive review of your channel, I believe we used those two styles before your channel did. We've used them for three to four years. Plus, uh oh. The two styles are extremely common on YouTube. The editor you're talking about didn't even design either of those two elements. Again, we've used them for three to four years at this point. Danny is a great Illuminati editor." When he reached out via email, he was just hoping to find out what plugin was being used on a particular video, a very common practice among editors. He was not looking to copy anyone's style. Danny is also a freelancer who makes his own videos. In the Discord, the video he referenced was about being inspired by your subject matter, not your style. The video he was referencing is a video of his own, not a legal eagle video. Other users went on to make fun of Blair for a basis accusation. This point, the uh oh it is it is just ridiculous to me that she created an issue with these people over like oh well you're basically just taking purple and making it blue like so what that's like saying michael bay took transformers and made bigger explosions like, big fucking deal. However, this brief conflict set the stage for a much larger controversy that would change Blair's career and public image forever. Just three days later, on the 23rd of April, 2023, the clip, a YouTuber that was once part of a group channel with Blair known as Sad Milk, would release a Twitter thread outlining the various issues that he and other members of the channel had with Blair with the tweet... Uh, challenging legal channel seems not the smart thing to do without actually exactly it's not very good everything she has is literally circumstantial and what she pointed out isn't even like stealing your stuff like to copy someone's style isn't something that's illegal at all and it's ridiculous yeah it's not it's not some random influencer she's calling out she's calling out like really she's calling out these people who have an editor that freelances for them that like they, they pay to do their editing who was interested in how they how she's doing certain stuff it, it's absurd and shows complete ignorance to the legalities of how things like this work or else me doing a video like this wouldn't be legal Right is basically what her accusation is, whereas all of my commentary over the video actually makes it run into the free use portion, so it's perfectly legal. I'm adding insight, I'm adding commentary, I'm adding content to what's there already, so it falls under free use, and it's the same exact thing. She's absolutely ridiculous to have made these accusations. Reading. Hey, yo, peeps. I have seen the recent drama regarding Illuminati. I left her and the collaboration group Sad Milk due to similar behavior seen in the recent events. He accused Blair of being abusive in meetings. Having that is a long problems, thread. 16? As well as petty acts of revenge, such as digging up old out of context statements and paying people to try and find dirt on him. He recounted a meeting where Blair screamed at him for over half an hour, and he said that when he and several other members left Sad Milk. I'm not going to lie, I don't give a shit who you are. If I work for you or I work with you and you yell at me for half an hour, I'm just going to go home and not talk to you ever again. I won't ever come back in. I won't ever contact you. I won't say a word about it. I won't even tell you I quit. I'll just leave. Like, fuck you. It's really that simple.
there's no reason at all to be yelling at somebody who works with you for half an hour. And I say this as somebody who's had leadership courses, who's been in charge of multiple like roofing crews and construction at one time, who's been in charge of people that were subcontracted by my dad's company and had to go supervise multiple job sites with multiple people, sometimes with multiple subcontractors at the same time, having to not only make sure that they're following code, but they're also following our standard because in Colorado you could four nail shingles on a roof, which means you're just putting four nails in each shingle. We had a standard at our company where you would not do less than six nails. Six nails is what you had to do with us because if you only do four, the wind in Colorado is extreme enough to pull it off. If you do like eight or ten nails, you're actually starting to compromise the integrity of the shingle and you're making it easier for the wind to pull off. Six is kind of the sweet spot according to the manufacturers. So six is what we always said you needed to use. And that was above and beyond. Not only that, but then also going to places like Mormon homes and Mormon churches that we had jobs on and having to make sure that the rules there were being followed. So like our contractors and subcontractors aren't on their property smoking cigarettes, for instance. They aren't on that property listening to music with cuss words in it because it violates Mormon traditions, customs, and their own set of rules. So I'd have to go around and ensure that they were following their own rules. I never had any reason to yell at people for 30 minutes. And I was 18 years old in charge of people that were 40. If you don't understand the dynamic that that has of a 40-year-old man who's done this job for 20 years looking at me and going, who the hell do you think you are to tell me how to do my job when I've been doing it longer than you've been alive? Meanwhile, I'm up there like, I get it, but you missed this detail, right? Like you do great work, but I mean, I'm just basically here as an extra set of eyes for some of you. Like people at that point, I was just an extra set of eyes to make sure things passed inspections because it's easy to overlook. I didn't have to give those guys as much insight. However, when they'd have an employee on their crew smoking on top of a Mormon church, there was a problem. So it's still never a reason to yell at anybody for 30 minutes. I didn't even see this happen in the military. In basic training, when the TIs are looking for reasons to yell at literally all of you all the time, they never singled anybody out for half an hour. The worst it probably got was they pulled me into their office one time for like 15, 20 minutes because I was de-stressing the people around me in basic. And they were trying to stress me out more so that I would stop de-stressing everybody else. Which they explained to everybody is exactly what that was about two weeks later when we were done. Right? So, and that was still not 30 minutes. It was just 20 minutes of them trying to actually make me stressed out over a piece of paper that in my mind was nothing more than a referral slip from school that literally didn't go anywhere after that point anyway. It didn't mean shit. So, it didn't matter. Uh, surely she did it just for uh, visibility for herself. Turns out good or bad. It, exactly. Exactly. And the thing is, uh, since you popped in late, um, when she did this, she had apparently spent the earlier portions of her channel's existence punching down and had good success at doing so. So when this happened... Instead of punching down, she was punching out. Like, this, these were people that were at her level, not beneath her. So, all of a sudden, she's fighting somebody who's got equal footing. And she doesn't just have the high ground to just, you know, turn Anakin into Vader. Milk, Blair began spreading rumors and fueling hate towards them. Click finished off his tweet by explaining why he or any other members never came forwards with their grievances. The members never came forwards with their grievances, quoting, None of us even mentioned the whole thing. We were just hoping we wouldn't have our reputations completely destroyed for simply walking away. If Click's claims were true, then that would mean that Blair was extremely toxic behind the scenes. And the drama between her and Legal... She yelled at him for half an hour. Of course she's toxic. What the hell? Obviously. 
If you need help to figure out someone's toxic, if they will yell at you for 30 minutes as a business partner or business associate or an employee or whatever, whatever level of you working in them with them in businesses, they're obviously toxic. Google was just the tip of the iceberg, but it doesn't stop there. Within hours of Click's Twitter post going live, I am Wonder, another member of Sad Milk, released his tweet about his time working and living with Blair. Wonder mostly corroborates Click's claims of Blair being abusive to him during a meeting. And Jesus. Instances of negativity. All these he people that are complaining about her have amazingly long business. threads. Wonder even became an editor to help out the channel. But unlike Click, Wonder had a first-hand experience of how Blair treats people she doesn't like. According to Wanda, Blair would actively use her legal team to censor anyone that went against her. Wanda also revealed a few personal details about Blair, such as her home being in disarray and diverting money that was meant to pay editors to fund her lavish lifestyle. Being okay, who gives a shit if her home's in disarray, so she's a mess. Congratulations. That's all there is to it. Like, her home's a mess, big deal. She's a pig. There you go. I wouldn't have lasted 30 minutes listening to it. it that's what I said. I would just straight up, I would have left. I wouldn't have even said I quit. I would have just left and gone home. Fuck them. Like, I don't have to work for you. Being around Blair negatively impacted his life. Once things became too much for him, Wanda claimed he had to live in a car that he and Blair had a rent-to-own agreement on. A car that Blair would repossess as soon as he left. These claims added further legitimacy to Click's post, and it was further backed up by an individual that was the closest to Blair, Oz Media. Oz came forward with his side of the story. He confirmed and added to the growing number of allegations made against Blair. Her vengeful nature, overbearing leadership, and never-ending smear campaigns against anyone who questioned her. Oz didn't deny his involvement in the toxic cycle that Blair had created, but he also wasn't going to keep quiet. Things so that makes it actually even worse because he's not even trying to deny his own spot and his own contribution to that toxic environment. He is owning it. Which makes him more credible. And this amount of people flipping on her and being like, yeah, she sucks. She's a nightmare to work with. It's clearly obvious why she had the failing that she has. These weren't looking good for Blair, but perhaps a well thought Or that she had, I guess. Could remedy the situation. On the 28th of April, 2023... Blair uploaded a 40 minute long apology slash response to all the recent accusations made against her, but this would ultimately lead yeah, to a more shit. backlash. Blair spent the first few minutes of her video issuing an apology to Legal Eagle for a poor behavior on Twitter. I just want to reiterate that I messed up, and I'm sorry for any stress this may have caused you, and of course to your team. I know I apologized privately and removed the tweets with that apology, and I'm now publicly sharing that information with all of you. Blair was taking accountability for her actions, but that couldn't be said for the rest of the video. Blair addressed the plagiarism accusation by saying that they're in the source document for the video, elaborated on her responsibilities in Sad Milk, and slandered the names of her former colleagues, all while making it look like she was the victim. According to Blair, she was the mastermind. Oh my god. So she, she took accountability, but she deflected. So she didn't take accountability. That's what that means. Is she acted like she was taking accountability, but then she tried to pawn it off. Like, hey, yeah, yeah, see see this mug of mine right here? Yeah, yeah, that's your fucking problem. It leaks. Bye. Like, that's basically what she did. Hey, she's not actually taking accountability. She's just pawning it off on somebody else because it's what she's trying to do. She's deflecting like it's not really her fault while making a backhanded apology. Like, you... Apologizing to the internet doesn't do anything. All it does is remind people that they hate you. You can't apologize to the internet. They don't give a fuck. It's not like the internet's not a real place. You can't physically go to the internet and interact with people. People don't give a shit how you are there. They just, you apologize to them through the internet where you were a cunt to them and now they hate you. That's how it goes. You feel like you should know who this is, but you don't. That's okay. I don't know who they are either. I had no idea. Uh, my uh, my editor, who's my niece, actually just uh, puts videos in here for me to watch and respond to, and so that's what I do. Sad milk's daily I have no idea who any of these people are most of the time. Sure that things ran smoothly while it the Flat Earth Fridays, which are I call them Flat Earth because they started out as just Flat Earth videos, but they've turned into just conspiracy videos at this point. Um, 
those are ones that typically I'm selecting or come off of channels that I follow that she goes, that's probably a good one and puts in there for me. So aside from that, I typically have no idea who, who any of these people are that I'm talking about on stream. Like her work is like quick and one topic slacked off and procrastinated on paying editors. When it came to wonder, she portrayed him as an editor that she hired on a $50,000 salary that didn't do his job. She claimed that he would miss deadlines and harass other members in group chats. Blair also took the opportunity to point out that wonder didn't keep up with his part of the rent to earn contract. Okay, so car, so she had to repossess it. So she's not just deflecting, she's also like she's deflecting but also being like, "Hey, by the way, uh, this dude who you feel sorry for that you're mad at me on behalf of, he's a piece of shit, and I'm going to discredit him while I deflect. That's amazing. But it was filled with lies, and what followed in the coming days revealed a much darker side of Blair. On the 29th of April, Wanda released a twit longer. I just think it's funny all this happened. I just think it's funny all this happened last month. I have no idea who these people are or what this drama is until now. What life was like around Blair. He started off by explaining his role in Sad Milk, quoting, I'd like to start with a blatant lie on my role as a Sad Milk editor. I did not become an editor to cover my share of the joint editor payments. I was living paycheck to paycheck, yet always paid my share. He also would touch on the car that was repossessed. After speaking to a lawyer, Wanda found out that the contract between him and Blair wasn't legally binding. Blair never stated how he even broke the contract and ignored several requests to have his property that was still in the car returned. His gaming monitors, a PlayStation console, and editing equipment were all being held hostage. At the time, these tools were a critical component of his life as an editor. And to really seal the deal, she even threw his YouTube award in the trash. Blair actively attacked a former friend and co-worker for leaving a toxic web of lies and abuse. Jesus, it just gets worse. Like, it really just gets worse. It's amazing that she did so terrible about this whole thing. She just, it, like, can it get worse? I don't know. I bet it can. Let's watch the train wreck. You only know about Legal Eagle? Yeah, I don't. I, I honestly, I don't know who they are either. I have no idea. Unfortunately, this was only one item on Blair's long list of vengeful acts. On the 2nd of May 2023, The Quick uploaded a video that would completely uncover the true extent of Blair's lies and hypocrisy. He addressed the Discord situation and pointed out that most of the information Blair presented was taken out of context. He also called out Blair for claiming That's to be the ones that restored his channel after a month-long ban, when in fact, it was Quick's MTN that was truly behind the ban being lifted. Blair only uh -oh. posted about it. The main portion of the video was spent presenting evidence of Blair's smear campaign on people who got on her bad side. He presented evidence of her in Discord chats trying to find any of his mistakes or past wrongdoings. Going back to the rumor machine, here's the same chat room again. Digging through my very oldest content looking for dirt. Let's play Minecraft with Crazy Part 2. Minecraft Alpha 1.2.6. Ah! The, the R word is here. Minecraft Alpha 1.2.6. Uh oh. Jesus Christ, I was a I was a high schooler in like 2010, playing Minecraft for my like 12 followers. Blair even when I bet that was something from uh, Diablo to 4. To all of, she even created alternate Reddit and Twitter accounts to harass him. The harassment wasn't even unique to him, with almost everyone that they had on the podcast. Blair was the type of creator that would make it a priority to send her and get revenge on anyone who she claimed wronged her. Friends, co-workers, or even fans that tried to speak up were silenced. Blair's reputation hasn't been the only thing that's been taking a hit recently. In the last 30 days, Blair's channel has lost over 100,000 subscribers, and the excess Ooh. of fans doesn't seem to be slowing Ooh. down. The recent controversy hemorrhaging subscribers, huh? That's too bad. Slander and censor someone who she doesn't agree with. Back in 2020, Blair accused a smaller YouTuber by the name of Cruel World Happy Mind of plagiarism, and would uh -oh. degrade her in public. Do you know, is this a YouTuber? Can you guys, like, tell me who this is or what they're even talking about? Because I have no idea. Yeah. Uh-oh. 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 If this video ends up on YouTube and Rumble and has a whole lot of attention, she might just decide she needs to punch down and I'm just shaking in my space boots. Yeah. They come back to me. If it's oh, no. I'll just say less than 50,000 uh, subscribers right. at the time. 
So that's basically my takeaway of this, is she just likes to punch down and make shit up. I don't care. So I thought it kind of funny. And she... I was like, you can't... That, that's pretty much my takeaway on that, is she's... She's insane. What happens when I try she decided to go through a bunch of nonsense to create drama and false accusations to then deflect and discredit people rather than actually do anything of value or be remotely credible in her accusations, I suppose. Right? That's crazy. Uh, oh, there was a render error at the end of the video? Okay. Well, I... I guess we'll like, go watch it. I'm copying you when you use me as a source. Heidi. Exactly. She even admitted, well, kind of, that she was restructuring her channel to kind of mock my own channel. So I was like, so you're taking my formula, uh, essentially, like, you, you're looking at how I outline my videos, you're trying to replicate that, and then when I cover a topic that you've already covered, I guess, then you say that I'm copying you. But I was like, honey, I've been doing the same thing. Like, that's not my fault. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, she just taking my videos and mocking me. Oh! I hate it. What a lame ass. Wait till she sees this and has an aneurysm because she can't fathom the fact that I understand she'd feel the same way about this video and I just don't give a shit. In reality, this other creator simply reached out to Blair due to some similarities in content, but Blair never responded. The drama did end after some discussion between the two implies This is right in the way. The smaller creator apologized. This bad placement. You take everything into account, you quickly realize that Blair is a creator that doesn't simply get involved in drama, that she creates it, and it's only a It's pretty much what I had assumed. And slander. It's what you said too. Is she she creates the drama so that she gets more attention and gets more clicks and that's what it's all about. What happens? When I mean, I that seems like it's fairly obvious, right? Let's see what people had to say. I still can't get over the fact she tried to call out a literal lawyer and thought it would work out fine. That's actually hilarious because, like, I don't like I said, I don't know anything about legal eagle, um, but the fact that it's a legitimate lawyer is hilarious. Yeah, it is. It's exactly what you said, and like. How are you going to try and accuse them of breaking the law when, as a content creator on YouTube, you should understand free use? Like, you should at least understand what free use is and how it works. You should understand what plagiarism is and what copyrights are. And she clearly just wants to create drama however she can to do things. He's the head lawyer at a big law firm. I mean, she thought she was punching out. Turns out she was punching up, and he was just like, you're dumb as fuck, kid. And gave her the backhand of belligerent disregard. At least I'm assuming because he basically just didn't have to respond anymore. She destroyed herself. Uh... Basically calling out legal legal solely because of her ego will go down as one of the dumbest ways someone's killed their career. That's actually just hilarious. Lesson learned. Don't go down the wrong hole. Just make good quality videos and do a variety of content. I mean, that's pretty much what I do, right? I just try to genuinely be myself and share my honest opinion. And over time, it'll probably become hypocritical as my perspective and views on things evolve and grow, as we all do. So, I'm sure people will pick it apart and come up with some way to try and hate me in the future. And I just, like I said, the internet's not a real place. Good luck. Uh, it's interesting to me how she's this bitter woman in her mid-30s, but hides behind this younger persona to get cool girl points. I mean, typical. Criticizes businesses for being shady, is a shady person herself. Once again, psychologically... Very typical that that's the case and how it goes down. 